Have you ever wondered why rockets are launched right next to the equator or the sea? Or why do we launch them vertically and not like airplanes? Let's answer all the possible, not stupid questions about rockets. Question 1. How does the Earth affect the rocket's launch? Let's remember some school physics. The gravity of the Earth is incredibly strong. To overcome this force, we need to develop a huge speed. Fortunately, rockets are capable of developing it, but it would be much more difficult if the Earth itself didn't help it. The Earth rotates around the Sun at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour. Very fast, to put it mildly. And we are all moving with it. So getting off the Earth is like getting out of a moving car. For some time, the rocket will move along our planet by inertia. It's like a helpful push. The rocket takes off from Earth at a certain speed already, and then it just needs to accelerate a bit more with the help of its fuel. By the way, this isn't the only scientific trick in launching rockets. To get to the maximum benefit from this push, they're launched into Earth's orbit from west to east. Why? Because the Earth rotates from west to east, of course. This way, the rocket receives maximum inertia. Question 2. Why are rockets launched next to the equator? The answer is related to the previous question. Believe it or not, the Earth's surface is moving faster at the equator. The school lied to us a little. The Earth isn't perfectly round. Rather, it's a flattened ellipse. And the equator is the widest point on our planet. Now, what is speed? It's the distance divided by time. And since the distance at the equator is the largest, about 25,000 miles, then the rotation speed there will be higher. So, imagine that you and your friend were standing at two different points of the Earth. You are at the equator, and your friend is closer to the North Pole. After standing there for the entire day, you would fly more miles than your friend, which technically means that you moved faster. So, yep, the rotation speed at the equator is higher. Naturally, it's most profitable for us to launch rockets from places where the initial thrust velocity will be as high as possible. And launching from the equator causes the spacecraft to move almost 300 miles per hour faster. Question 3. How do scientists choose the places for the launch pads? Rockets are gigantic, complex monsters weighing several thousand pounds. Needless to say, dozens of errors may occur during startup. Probably the most dangerous one is a mid-flight failure. That's when something goes wrong in a rocket that's still in the sky. If the burning debris falls to the Earth, it may cause a huge disaster. Now, let's look at a map of the location of launch pads in the world. You can see that many of them are located near the coast. For example, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, USA, or the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota, India. That's the way to minimize and ideally eliminate altogether the risk of debris falling on your head. If something goes wrong during the launch, it will fall into the ocean waters, far from densely populated areas. And yeah, there are a bunch of launch pads located far from the sea. That's because many other things also play a role in choosing the location. For example, the availability. The launch pad should be ideally accessible from land, air, and sea. Question 4. Wait, doesn't Florida have crazy weather? Why did they choose this state? For more than 70 years, NASA has been launching rockets from Cape Canaveral, Florida. It's because Florida has a very humid and tropical climate. There are more thunderstorms a year than in any other place. This can greatly interfere with rocket launches. It's very dangerous. Moreover, one time it actually happened. In 1987, lightning struck an AC-67 rocket before takeoff. Its systems failed and eventually the rocket was destroyed. Fortunately, there were no people on board. Another big weather threat is hurricanes. And yes, they also happen in Florida more often than in any other state. But despite all this, NASA still chose this cursed place to launch their rockets. Why? Well, probably because all the crazy things, including rocket launches, must happen in Florida. But on a serious note, before NASA moved to Cape Canaveral, rockets were launched from another place, from the White Sands test site located in New Mexico. 
back then, since White Sands was located in a remote area of the country, everything was more or less safe. If the rockets had fallen, they wouldn't affect or destroy anything. But as time went on, our technologies developed. The rockets got bigger and needed much more space for their launches. As a result, the danger zone also increased. White Sands was just 26 miles from Las Cruces, New Mexico, and 70 miles from El Paso, Texas. In other words, it was surrounded by settlements. Therefore, scientists began to look for safer places. The East Coast seemed like the best option. Can you guess why? Not only is the East Coast closer to the equator, but it's also located near the Atlantic Ocean. We already know that this actually adds plus one to the security. That's why in the 1950s, NASA moved its launches to Florida. The first one was the launch of the Bumper 8 rocket, which took place on July 24th, 1950. And then this place became a full-fledged spaceport. Question 5. Why are rockets launched vertically? Rockets are thin, cylindrical tall things that go into space vertically and leave behind a giant cloud of smoke. But why are they launched that way and not like airplanes, for example? Well, this sounds a bit crazy. To implement it, we'd have to make a lot of changes to the current rocket designs. But the most important thing is that it would waste a lot of resources. This may surprise you, but planes and rockets are designed a little differently. The plane's main task is to fly in the atmosphere. The rocket's main task is to leave the atmosphere as soon as possible. Due to the air resistance in the sky, the rocket loses most of its energy while flying. Therefore, we need to make sure that it has left the Earth's atmosphere before its fuel is completely used up. And since it needs a lot more fuel than an airplane, it's easier and more economical to launch it straight up. So it will use a minimum of fuel, just what it takes to kick gravity in the face. Question 6. Why does the trajectory of a rocket change after launch? Remember that we said that the rocket's main task is to escape gravity by any means and reach space? Now forget about it. Technically it's true, but it doesn't show the full picture. The very task of getting into space isn't particularly difficult. The space isn't actually that high. You'll officially become an astronaut if you go to an altitude of about 60 miles above Earth. But it's all about staying in orbit. The orbit is the boundary of two worlds. Here, the gravitational pull of the Earth is still large enough that the rocket doesn't fly into outer space, but at the same time, low enough that it doesn't fall back to Earth. So, if you reach it, there's no need to waste fuel anymore. The spacecraft will simply fly in zero gravity by inertia. If the rocket flies purely in a straight line, it will simply fly into outer space. To enter orbit, it needs to fly in an arc. Therefore, after starting, it begins to tilt to the side and gradually increases this slope. Getting into orbit is a very difficult task, actually. The fuel should be enough to reach an insane speed of 18,000 miles per hour. That's why we invented this optimization method. Smart people call it gravitational reversal. So a rocket bends its trajectory after launch because it has to go into Earth's orbit. Congrats, that was a long journey. But now you, hopefully, learned a bit more about rocket launching. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.